Hey guys, in this video I talk a bit about a very useful application of AI, which is personalized image generation. You can use it for example to generate professional profile pictures for job applications, but of course also many other things. In this video I explain how this works and also show you how to do it by yourself on Google Colab. Specifically I use Dreambooth, but also talk about some other methods out there. These techniques are quite powerful because you don't just get AI generated images, but also customized images based on your input. So you can synthesize your subject into different contexts. In my example I just used a couple of Leonardo DiCaprio images, but I've also tried this with images of my friends and it worked quite well. Let's quickly talk about stable diffusion because eventually that's the key technology which enables us to create these amazing images. In a nutshell, it's a generative deep learning model that creates images. For those of you who didn't dive into the details of stable diffusion, it's a diffusion model that uses a UNet to learn to denoise images. This overview from the paper gives insights into the model architecture. The special part is that the reverse process can be conditioned on different things such as text, images or generally any representation. One popular approach is to use clip embeddings, which are jointly optimized on image and text pairs. These text vision embeddings work much better as it's easier for the model to derive an image from the textual description. Stable diffusion is trained on around 5 billion image text pairs, the so-called Lion 5B dataset. And the nice part is that it's fully open source, meaning that the users own all rights for the generated images and it can be used commercially. One additional detail worth to mention, Stable Diffusion doesn't operate on the pixel space directly, but instead uses a compressed representation of the images, which reduces the dimensionality and speeds up the generation. There are also great tutorials out there if you want to go further into the details, I've linked one of the best ones in the video description. So what can you do with Stable Diffusion? A couple of popular options are inpainting, which means to reconstruct a part of the image, Outpainting, which is the opposite, so drawing around an existing image. Text to image, which many of you have probably already used. And also things like image to image translation or style transfer. What we plan to do today is to generate a new image from a textual description, which is however personalized based on our images. So how can we do this? Currently, there exist several techniques to achieve these personalized images. All of them are based on fine-tuning stable diffusion on your images. But this is not as straightforward as you might think. First of all, the model has around 1 billion parameters, so retraining all of them is computationally expensive. Also, a common thing that happens is called language drift and simply means that your model overrides the meaning of words with your custom images. For example, if you fine-tune the word person with your images, the model forgets what other people look like and is only able to generate a specific person. This is also called catastrophic forgetting. Finally, overfitting happens quite easily, which simply means the model reproduces the samples you gave it. Because you have very few of them, the model simply remembers all of them and therefore simply replicates the training distribution. Now let's talk about some of the techniques to get around these issues. In the following, I give you a short overview on four popular techniques for personal image generation. All of these ideas are pretty straightforward to understand for anyone with some experience in machine learning. One possibility is called Hypernet. This idea comes from Novel AI, which is a storyteller software, and details can be found on their blog linked in the video description. The idea is simply to inject additional smaller networks at multiple points of the stable diffusion model and only fine tune those while keeping all other parameters fixed. More precisely, they are injected in the cross attention layers and this approach avoids overfitting and expensive computation. A sort of similar idea is presented in LoRa, a paper from 2021 which talks about general fine tuning of transformer models. LoRa stands for Low Rank Approximation and the key idea is to decompose the weight matrix as described by this formula. W0 represents the pre-trained model weights and B and A are additional learnable parameters. These rank decomposition matrices 
are injected into each layer of the transformer architecture. As a result, the original model weights stay untouched and because of this decomposition, less parameters need to be optimized. They also show that the expressiveness of this approach is similar to a full fine tuning. Another recent technique is called textual inversion. This was presented in the paper An image is worth one word from August last year. They reformulate this fine tuning as an inverse problem. The idea is to find a new word in the textual embedding space that corresponds to these images. If you think about it, there must be some description in the space that eventually leads to these images. And therefore this optimization is like a search in the embedding space. After fine tuning, they end up with a word embedding vector that represents the concepts in the images. What's nice about this is that there is no need to tune any parameters of the stable diffusion model, which removes all of the disadvantages of fine tuning approaches. I really like this idea. Finally, there is Dreambooth, the fine tuning technique we will use in this video. I always find it important to have a deeper understanding of such methods before applying them, so let's quickly dig into the details. Dreambooth has been presented by Google Research in the paper on the left. The name is motivated from photo booths that let you put a picture into different contexts. That's also what this model is about. It's an approach for personalization of text to image diffusion models. There are two key components in this model. First of all, the idea is to override a rare token of the vocabulary with the concepts in the images. For example, on the left with one of these specific dogs. So it's not just any dog, but instead a for example, setWX doc, where setWX is the rare token. So the prompt syntax is, for example, a picture of a rare token and then image class. On GitHub, you can find collections of these rare tokens that can be used, because based on my experience, it doesn't work equally well with each of them. The second component addresses the issue with catastrophic forgetting. A so-called prior preservation loss makes sure that the model still knows how other dogs look like. So its intention is to preserve the meaning of a class instead of overwriting it with only one specific instance. To do so, the model first generates a couple of images of the specific class and later during training uses this special loss function inside the diffusion model. The second term here makes sure that the model is still able to reconstruct other dogs by also denoising their images. Dreambooth states in the paper that 3 to 5 sample images of a subject are sufficient to synthesize it in different contexts. Now that we know how Dreambooth works, let's go over to the programming part. A big disclaimer, none of the following code comes from me. Instead, we are lucky that there are already implementations of Dreambooth available. There's also a web UI for fine-tuning stable diffusion, which I've linked in the video description, but I prefer to use code. First of all, the code will run on Google Colab, which provides us with a 16GB GPU as part of the free version. Secondly, we will use the Hugging Face Diffusers library, which contains implementations of state-of-the-art diffusion models, such as Stable Diffusion. Then we will use commands from Accelerate, which is another Hugging Face library. It's just like an abstraction library with many features like distributed and parallel computing, and eventually we will just use it to execute the Dreambooth code. And that's the last piece, the actual implementation of Dreambooth can be found in the Diffusers library. We will however use a forked version of it by Shivam Shri Rao, I hope I pronounced that correctly, that contains a couple of extensions that are not yet merged into the main branch of the Diffusers library. All right, so this is the notebook and the first step is to run this setup and installation cell. And what this does is first clone this repository from GitHub and then install the content of it and also a couple of libraries like bits and bytes. Bits and bytes will be used to enable execution on these smaller GPUs on Colab free version because this code usually only runs on larger GPUs and with a couple of optimizations it's possible to reduce the GPU memory and then we simply navigate into Dreambooth, which is one of the examples. So if you open this folder tab here, 
You can see in examples are a couple of research projects like Dreambooth, but also um, textual inversion and they all have their place here. And then inside Dreambooth we have files like drain-dreambooth.py, which we will need. And then finally we install all the requirements for Dreambooth and then run accelerate config default, which creates this accelerate environment. And that's all we need to do regarding the setup. So the next step is, as I mentioned, the GPU part. So here we can run NVIDIA SMI to check what GPU we have. And here we have a Tesla T4 with 16 gigabytes of memory. And so that's why we need to use the 16 gigabytes version. If you go here, you can see other implementations for even smaller GPUs. So this is the 16 gigabytes one, but you can also run on 12. For this, you will need X formers and you can, e can even run on eight gigabytes. All right, so the next step is to upload the samples. And for this, I create a new directory called images, which will be here. And now I simply grab all of my images, drag and drop them on the images directory, and it will upload all of them. And then those are the sample images. And here I use a little bit more because I realize the image quality gets better if I use more images. All right, so now we can go over to the fine tuning part. And for this, we need to run this very long command, which executes train dream booth.py. And for execution, we use this accelerate environment. And now let me quickly explain to you all of these arguments. So first of all, we need to tell the file where it can find our pictures. And this is done by using instance data dir. So that's where we put our samples. And here I've set it to content images and that's exactly what's used here. Then we have the prompt for our images. And here we use this special token like setwx for example. And in my example, I simply use photo of setwx person. So that's the prompt that describes what's on the image. Then we need the prior preservation to make sure that the model doesn't forget what other people look like. And for this, we use this argument, which uses this prior preservation loss. And as you remember, there's also a weight parameter on this formula. And here it's simply set to one. And for this prior preservation loss, we need to generate images and for these images, we have a class prompt. So this tells us what's on these prior images. And here it's simply pictures of regular people. So it's photo of person. And the number of images we generate is 300. So it will generate 300 images of regular people to preserve the meaning of what a normal person looks like. And the rest is mostly optimization to be able to run this on the smaller GPU. So one is the 8-bit atom, which comes from bits and biases, and it uses reduced precision to reduce the GPU memory. And also another accelerator is mixed precision, which also uses a re reduced data type to um, use less memory. So you can find those here. And the rest is just regular machine learning code, like learning rates, number of train steps, learning rate scheduler, and yeah. All right, Colab is already complaining. I'm not using the GPU. So let's run this and start the training. So as you can see, all of the images have been generated and now we run the training code. So we run these 1000 steps. And while this is training, let's quickly have a look at the generation code, which is very simple. We simply fetch the model that was generated after 1000 steps and use this stable diffusion pipeline. And eventually we use one of these prompts to generate images. And then I just save the image. And here I just generate 10 samples for different randomly selected prompts. And while this is still training, let's quickly go over my generation process. 
First I have to say that certainly not every generated images that comes out of the model looks great. A lot of times I get very strange eyes for the generated images and this is a known issue. To resolve it the trick was to use this variational autoencoder on Hugging Face that was fine tuned on humans and creates much more realistic looking faces. And I didn't find the option to include this autoencoder in the original diffusers library, that's why I used this forked version from Shivam. The same thing happened when I tried to make the generated people smile. The teeth looked very strange and even with some special prompts I found on Reddit, I wasn't able to resolve it. It got much better after using this VAE approach. Quite often I got images of people that didn't really look similar to my target. This was an indication that I didn't train long enough. After increasing the number of steps I got better results. On the other hand, if you train too long, the model tends to overfit, which means it will just generate your sample images. So the key is to find the sort of sweet spot for the number of training iterations. I also found that this really depends on the specific person. For some faces it took less epochs than for others. Eventually I started to see some reasonable results after tweaking the parameters over and over again. Besides that I think the most important thing is however the image quality and diversity. In my experiments I always got better results when using around 10 images instead of just 3. Finally I wanted some more variation in the background and tried out different prompts like office building, skyline or business to achieve this. The part with designing prompts is a science in itself. No wonder that there are actually job profiles for prompt engineers now. Important tokens I used are certainly close up picture and suit. But I realized that there are so many other words you can add to improve the results. So these were the final results of my dream booth experiments. They might not be perfectly on point but are pretty close to what I expected. The sample image quality is key here for sure as I mentioned before. I've seen some videos for further AI based post processing that might give these images the final touch. For example there is a GAN model that does face restoration to correct unrealistic parts of the images. You can find the video linked in the description. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and I wish you a great day.